Scratch is one of the most amazing tools out there for helping students create interactive projects and of course for teaching basics of programming. But you certainly don't need to know anything about programming or be a programmer to have students use this in your classroom. So this first video will be all about the basics of Scratch, how to get started, how to get around the interface, and how to make something move. So the first thing you'll want to do or have students do is join Scratch. You'll have to answer some questions. You'll put in a username, password, and then it will ask your age or your birth date. And if you have students who are under 13, it'll ask them to put in a parent's email. Now, it's really important that either they have their parent's email or they use yours. And the reason for that is they can't share their projects until their email is confirmed. So very important that you do that. Um, I also have had issues if students can't get emails from outside of the district, so like our Gmail blacklists, anything that doesn't come from out, doesn't come from inside our district, then that also gets blocked by scratch. So those are just some considerations when you have students sign up for this. But it's really important for them to be able to have a full account because sharing these projects is the most powerful part of the experience. So once you walk through the sign, sign up process, you go ahead and you will sign in and then you'll be in scratch. Now on the front page here, uh, you'll see updates based on people you're following, so it does have a social aspect to it. There is some news, and then featured projects and studios. So you can go and play around and take a look at these. And the coolest part about all of them is by going into a project, let's say this one here, every single one of them you can see inside. So you can actually see how the project was created by whoever created it which is super cool to have that opportunity. And that is just a part of the culture of learning to program is learning from other people's code. So to get started with your own project, you'll click on Create. And once you get there, you'll see the interface for Scratch. So let me just take a second to get you familiar with that. First of all, up here, you have a title. And it always starts with being untitled, so it's always good to name it something. And then here's your stage. This is where all the action happens for your project. So sprites, which are down here, are your characters. They all go on your stage, and you can also have backdrops for your stage as well. This can make your stage full screen by clicking on that button there. And you also have the flag and the stop sign. And these are important in events that could potentially start your project, but don't have to. Up above here, you have File and Edit menu. You also have Tips, which brings up this window here with some nice step-by-step -step tutorials, how-tos, and a description of the blocks. And then you also have the About Scratch, which takes you to the About page and gives you a little more information about Scratch itself. All right. You also then have in the middle here your scripts, and these are what tell your characters what to do. And there are 10 different categories. You have costumes, which are different outfits or shapes that your sprite can make. And then one of your actions can be to switch costumes, and that's one of the ways to show movement through animation. You can also add sounds as well. For sprites and backdrops, you can click on the first button in each category to choose from their bank of already created sprites, like so. Or you can click on the paintbrush, and that'll actually allow you to create your own sprites. And it has both a bitmap editor, which uses pixels, the little squares. You can paint, use shapes, text. Or there's also a vector mode as well, which allows you to draw shapes that are mathematically drawn, and thus you can stretch them without them losing resolution, which is super nice. All right, if you right-click a sprite, you can get more info, duplicate, delete, or save it to a local file. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because I don't need it right now. And that brings us to our scripts. So here I have the cat and I have a ball. And to get started, we're going to do some really simple movement. Now, you can move 10 steps. This is really popular. So here's motion. And moving 10 steps is a really popular block for moving something forward. So if I click on an event, 
and I just use when the green flag is clicked, it will move the cat forward. Now that's really nice, but then it becomes quite tricky when you're trying to move up and down or left and right. And for me, it's a lot simpler if I use the XY coordinates to make that work. So instead of moving 10 steps, I use these. Change X by 10 and change Y by 10 at least to start with. And what that allows me to do then is if I change X by 10, you're still moving to the right. If you change Y by 10, you move up. All you have to do is make those negative, and then you're moving left and down. So then I'll need four of these. And then in events, these are all things that kick off our Scratch project. One of the events is when a certain key is pressed. So in this case, I'm going to need four of these. And you'll notice there's a drop down. And so when you, by using that drop down, you can choose different keys. So in this case, changing x by 10, I'm going to want to move right. Then we'll want to click in here and change this to negative 10. And that's going to be left. And then vice versa, up. And then down is negative 10. So it's a great way to teach students the coordinate plane, even if they've never learned it before. They pick up on it pretty quick using this. And now I can move my character all over the map using those keys. So that gets you started knowing the interface of Scratch, as well as how to get a sprite to move around.